a busy week in politics. By the way, our most loyal and longest uh, watching viewer, Mila K. Smith down in Kreiner. 102 years old, really? my oh, grandmother, wow. not wow. feeling well. <clears throat> Granny, we well, get to feel better well, here. Yeah. And if she were here today, she'd ask you this question. How did the president do in Tucson last week? Well, I believe it was his finest hour. I, I think it was, he was presidential. He was presidential like Bill Clinton was when uh, he was here 15 years ago. He was a uniter. He led us. And he, and he didn't divide us. I mean, what we all ought to strive to be is the citizens of that little nine-year-old girl who had died. I hope this is the beginning, Colby, and I believe you'll agree with me that this is the end of the, the, the acid, acidic political ranking that's not only going on in this country, not so bad in this state, but we need to begin to work together as a civilized society to where we have major, major problems in this country. The president united us. I believe it was his finest hour here on Martin Luther King weekend. So and you said he gets the an end. A plus. You said the end, and I'm wondering, Sarah Palin's timing, I mean, she wants to be the president of the United States. I mean, she's playing court, but she wants to be. Was that the beginning of the end for her campaign? Because that was really badly timed. Uh, you know, that's, it's r really tough to say as far as her, her timing. Uh, I'm going to go with back to Richard's point. I do agree with him entirely about how the president did handle it. Um, uh, frankly, it was nice to see local media, at least in Oklahoma, I think we're, we're a little more even kill. You didn't see the reaction from the left. And uh, but places where we saw that immediately uh, was deplorable. Like I said last week, you disgrace the you know you disgrace the dead by doing that. But as far as Palin, um, you know I, I think that she's one of those people. She makes a great celebrity, but I don't necessarily know if she's a good political tactician. So I do I do a you know, question. The question is, Colby, why did she even comment at all? There was yeah. no need for her. Bad time. I, I agree. Bad I time. Agree. Okay, next next day, let's we gotta have a little fun with our new governor. Take a look at the, this is the oath of office this week. I will support, obey, and defend. Then I will support, obey, and offend. The Constitution of the United States. Okay, well, you know, everybody's had a little fun with the governor of support, uh, obey, and offended. But listen, <laughs> let's give props to the governor, okay? <clears throat> her husband, Wade Christian, says I could be, uh, there could be a conflict of interest. I stay in that law firm. She says her daughter's no longer going to lobby. Props to the Gov for her ethical stands and her family's ethical stands this week. Now, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, having having worked for Mary Fallon for two years, knowing what kind of person she is, uh, I, I'm not surprised at all by her husband's decision to step away from a firm that does represent some interest of the state and going into private practice, uh, as well as her daughter uh, and the decision that she shouldn't lobby the Capitol. So, no, uh, I completely agree. And, and it's exciting to be able to sit here for the first time and, and call her Governor Fallon. Okay, as you uh, are you as uh, sincere about uh, saying congratulations, Governor, on these ethical steps? Oh, well, absolutely. I, I think they're great steps, and I give the, the, the Governor all the credit in the world and her husband for stepping down from the law firm. It was a cold day, I, and you know I understand she was nervous. You know, Chloe, I got into the uh, the ball uh, a Monday night. I felt like a, a, a mouse at a cat convention. But the best part about the ball was the Leon Russell. You know, I had albums of him back in college 35 years ago. But folks, let's not forget that this is Martin Luther King Day. It was a great party Monday night, but we. Are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Martin Luther King holiday. Uh, he stands right up there with our, the leaders of, the, of this country, great nation. And next month, of course, we celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Okay, big deal. We talked a month ago about all these uh, Republicans coming to work for the government. Big story in the paper today. People are talking about it. We've been talking about it for a month. The question <laughs> is, is this a tempest in a teapot, or should something be done about the two-year ban? Oh, and it has to be something to be done. I mean, come on. When the Democrats were in charge, matter of fact, uh, the, the whole point of this was, I, I think Senator Easley got a job with the Grand River Dam Authority. My friends on the right were all up in arms, and he got this job. Now it seems to be epidemic. Qu folks, I ask you the question. Uh, was this fixed in during the campaign? These guys are going to be making ninety dollars to $99,000 a year in an economy where people are struggling. We're fighting with the budget. Uh, folks, this is cronyism, cronyism. If you guys don't do something about it, uh, 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 I am going to talk about this every single day that I'm at the legislature. There's something wrong here. Okay, big deal. Is it too, too broad a stroke, or is there somewhere in the middle we ought to be on this two-year ban thing? Well, first of all, I, I have absolute faith that Rich is still going to talk every day at the legislature anyway. Um, <laughs> And, and I welcome that. The debate needs to be there. Uh, but, uh, no, listen, that's the debate. I agree. If you, we need to see, is the public really interested? Does there need to be a hard two-year ban? Uh, you know, some have mentioned that for lobbyists, too. Right now, legislators, uh, legislatures can leave office, and they can come back as a registered lobbyist the following day. Some states have it, what they call a cooling-off period. Uh, I, I think it's a great uh, conversation to have. Uh, I don't know where we're at, but it's, right now the question is, what is the letter of the law? What is the spirit of the law, and those can be two different things. All right, real fast. Got to be real quick on this one. There is uh, going to be a lot of budget cuts. We're going to have some budget cuts. 
Ten percent of Oklahomans suffer from mental illness. Ten percent of Oklahomans suffer from substance abuse issues. Uh, calls to the uh, the uh, suicide hotline up 65 percent. Where is mental health substance abuse going to come out in this year's budget? Real quick. Uh, well, I would hope as somebody who works in health care that we keep it at the forefront. We have great leadership in, in Commissioner Terry White uh, with the Department of Health and Mental Services. Uh, it's something that we can change the outcome on the front end like what we saw in Tucson. What about you? Are we, who are we going to be on mental health and substance well, abuse? Well, you know, the budget's in their hands. You know, 10% of our folks are, are addicted to alcohol and drugs. The other 10% are mentally ill. Folks, we have to address all issues for all people, even those that are in the shadows of life. And, and remember this. Remember this. You can come to your uh, News 9, your slash your vote counts to us a question we'll answer it.